I did it, everybody, and made it to the end of the year. Consecutive episodes every Tuesday and Friday since I've started have not fallen off or given up. And if you do that same thing, just like me, you'll have a show on YouTube that nobody still knows exists. What's going on, everybody? It's the granddad of Granddad Wooly, and you are here for a very special edition of Wooly Reviews. Hip-hop slash game slash film data. Today we are going to be talking about the year in review of my top five music, movies, and games of the year that I've come across and I've experienced and I want to tell you guys about. We have reached the end of the year. This is the last one of the reviews of the year until we hit 2015 with new kinds of all kinds of good shit. So I just want to share with you guys a special episode, let you know what my top fives were and you know why and all that other stuff, you know. So this is my personal top five. Uh, I haven't listened to every album, I haven't watched every movie, and I haven't played every game, but this is what I've come across this year that's really stuck out to me, or I continue to go back to, or impress me the most. So everybody's list is different, but this is mine right here. So we're going to start off, because I'm a hip-hop dude, we'll start off on the music tip. Now, these are my top five albums that have released this year that I listened to, enjoyed, or just, you know, got caught into the most out of everything that I've listened to. And this is in no particular order, but I'm going to label them off or read them off in order of release for this particular section. So, the first album, I got a, I got a little list because, you know, I can't remember shit. Hold on. Okay. So, the first album in my top five list comes from Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib, Pinata, or better known as Cocaine Pinata, because that's what it's really fucking called. But we'll say Pinata for you know, legal or whatever. It's pinata. Pin but this is the number, well, not the number one, but the first album on my list. I really like this album. I was looking forward to it. I'm a big fan of both Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib. Me and Freddie Gibbs come from the same backyard, Gary, Indiana. And, you know, it's good to see somebody from there really getting some shine. And when I heard he linked up with Mad Lib, who I was a huge fan of, since I was a teenager, I was just, you know, gassed and just fucking ready to hear this fucking record. And when I heard Thuggin' when they dropped that back in 2012, I was super hyped. And then they just kept dropping singles until they finally put out the album. And when they did, it was well worth it. One of the best projects put together. I'm not going to get too deep into it. Like I said, this is just my best picks. But I would say, if you've never heard of the album, Pinata from Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib, you got to check it out because it's dope. It's straight up, pure old school slash gangster hip hop slash just every it's just dope it's just hot check it out that's one of my favorites and you know freddie gives a mad lip pinata that's on the list next one i don't want to hear no shit about this i'm just gonna say it but i'm gonna go ahead and say it anyway granddad wooly the vanilla tape i know what you're thinking granddad how are you gonna put your own shit on your list i'm gonna explain why i'm putting my own shit on my list now i've listened to a lot of music i released the vanilla tape I'd say around April. Yeah, April was when I put it out. And I have to say that even listening outside of my mind, not just me, other people, other publications, Google the shit, I, bet, I swear to God, Google the shit, you'll find out, have all said that this is probably one of the best albums that they've heard from someone they've never heard of, which is me. Um, sonically, musically, it was one of my most cohesive projects, I would have to say. I enjoyed it, of course, because I made the shit, but everybody who I've come across has said that the sound, which was done by my good friend Hugo Harrison, aka Vanilla, who did the whole production on there, the lyrics, the song subject matter, the cohesiveness, and it's what it was. It wasn't really an album in my mind, it was a musical presentation piece, but it, uh, I've listened to like a ton of music this year, and I still find that putting myself outside of myself, the Vanilla Tape, if, if it wasn't me and I just heard it, from, if I was somebody else and I heard me, and I heard that record, that would still be one of my favorite records that I've ever heard because it is dope. So if you've never heard of Granddad Wooly, the Vanilla Tape, go check it out. I don't want to hear no shit. That's my opinion. And I fucking stand by it. Next album, which is not me, Dilated Peoples, Directors of Photography. Now, this was the first album that I reviewed on this show. Actually, this was the first video. The first episode of Wooly Reviews was about this album. And you can revert back to that um review if you want to know my full take on it but all in all it is a great album it was you know a long-awaited album um it was a rhyme sayers debut and i was really impressed with it i really liked it and i still listen to it from time to time this day and it got put out i think around august so it's got a lot of shelf life so if you never heard dilated people's directors of photography go check it out and go watch my review it's on it's on you know just look up woolly reviews dilated people's and you'll find it it's the very first episode when i was when I was green in the review game, but now I'm, I'm a little seasoned, I'm sort of, you know, whatever. Next album, Rap City, Beauty and the Beast EP. 
Now, I also reviewed this album, and this is one of the most impressive releases of the year for me still. I love Rap City. I love her style. I love the way she rhymes. I love her subject matter. And, you know, she put out probably one of her best projects um, that she's ever put out. And like I said, one of the best projects of the year for me. The production on here is crazy. Her rhyming ability is off the charts. And she just put together a well-crafted body of work. And I also, like I said, reviewed it. You can check out that review if you want to see my full review of it. But it is definitely, like I said, I even said in my review, it's going to be one of my top fives. And it did not change my mind. It still is after everything I've heard. So definitely Rhapsody, Beauty and the Beast, EP. Still an album to me. Next and well, last album is an album that I also reviewed, and this is probably one of the most hypers that I've got for an album listening to, and it was none other than Prime, self-titled. The Royce the 5'9 DJ Premier collaboration album under name Prime. That album, to this day, is still fucking hard. Pause. But it's fucking hard. And I watched the review. I ain't gonna say nothing about it. Shit's hard. That's all I gotta say. And it is definitely, it came in, it came out in December, and it was like the best record to end off the year for me, hip-hop wise. So that's my top five. I'm gonna do a quick synopsis over the top five again. It was once again Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib Pinata, Granddad Wooly the Vanilla Tape, Dilated Peoples, Directors of Photography, Rap City Beauty and the Beast, and Prime. Prime. Alright guys, so now we're gonna talk about my top five movies. Now, like I said, I have not watched every single movie that's came out. These are only the movies that I have watched or a batch, a group from the batch of movies that I have watched and what has impressed me or I found to be enjoyable the most or surprised me the most. So this is in no particular order and I couldn't really order this. You know, I was lazy. I didn't want to order this by release date because it's not as easy as the album. But the first movie is The Drop starring Tom Hardy and James Gandolfini. I actually reviewed this on the show and it's still one of my favorite movies that I've seen this year. The story is great. Characters are great. Nice twist. Nice plot. And everything about it, you know, it's just a dope movie. It's a really, you know, suspenseful thriller type movie. It's got like, you know, a guy, you got to really watch the movie and pay attention. You got to, you know, you get real clever with it and all that good shit. James Gandolfini's in it, Tom Hardy's in it. And it's just Naomi Rapace. I can't remember her name, but that she's in it too. And they all did a damn good job in this movie. And this is still one of my favorites of 2014. So if you haven't seen The Drop, I don't know if it's on DVD yet or if it's, you know, but if it is, go check it out. Definitely recommend that you go watch that shit. Next movie is a movie that I actually wasn't intending on seeing at all. Like I kind of was supposed to go see one movie at the theater and that shit didn't work out. So I just went to another movie and the movie ended up being Son of God. Now, I'm not really much into the religious movies and, you know, it's a Jesus biopic and you've seen one, you've seen them all. But this was actually done really well. The story, even though we all know the story, it was still told very well. Actors were done, acting was done really well, and it was just a really great entertaining movie, and I was very impressed with it for a movie that I wasn't planning on or even looking forward to seeing at all. I just went to go see it, and I was pleasantly surprised. So, um, you know, it goes from the whole story of Jesus when he was born, and, you know, when he did the crucifixion and the resurrection and all that. You know all the, the whole story. Everybody knows the story about Jesus. So that's what that was, and I really, you know, if you haven't seen that movie, if you're into those types of movies religion movies or if you're open to watching it check it out it's, it's, it's a pretty good movie i was really impressed i was the most impressed i was with a movie next movie is one of my top movies that i was looking forward to and when it came out it delivered and i also reviewed this dumb and dumber 2 jim carrey jeff daniels the 20 year sequel they came back and they came back and brought the fire watched the review but all in all it was a great sequel took them fucking 20 years two damn decades to do it but they played off on it well story was great Comedy was strong, everything about it, laughed my ass off, I'd watch it again if I could, I can't wait for it to come out on DVD because I'm going to definitely get it, at least watch it again, but that was really one of the best sequels that we've been waiting for for a long time to come out and deliver, so good job on that one, one of my favorite. Now, the next film is a documentary. Actually, the next two films are documentaries and they're both music related. The next film on my top list is Nas, Time is Illmatic. Now, I saw this film at the A3C Festival this past October here in Atlanta. And, you know, like I said, I really wasn't, I just went in to go check it out. You know, I didn't really expect much out of it, but this was actually a really great documentary. Not only does it tell the story of Nas growing up, you know, with his father, Aludara, and, you know, with his mom and everything like that. You get to see, you know, his brother and everything like that. And how he got signed to Columbia and, you know, the process of making Illmatic and what happened after Illmatic. But in general, just how life was for him growing up in Queens. 
how he was involved in the hip hop culture and you know everything surrounding about him. So it's not only a great Nas biopic, but it's also a great hip hop documentary too, because you get a lot of information from other things that was going on around the same time. And I'm not, I'm a fan of, I'm, I'm, I'm not a super fan of Nas, but I do respect Nas. I have, I have, have bought plenty of his albums, and I think this is one of the best documentary movies that I've seen in a while, you know, focused on a specific artist. So I definitely think, especially if you're a Nas fan, check out this record, not record, this movie, but also the record Illmatic, which is about, because if you never heard Illmatic, that's like probably one of the most legendary hip hop albums of all time. So, and it's the classic of classics, so definitely. And then the last movie is another, like I said, documentary, and it's called Our Vinyl Weighs a Ton. And this one is actually about the LA-based independent record label Stone's Throw Records um, that's founded by Peanut Butter Wolf. It houses artists such as Mad Lib, Mad Villain, you know, Percy P, uh, you know, well, it used to be um, Aloe Black until he, he jetted out, you know, but, you know, and a lot of other people, you know, um, John Wayne, it's a ton of people. But it just talks about, you know, you know, Stone's Throw building from the ground up, what they went through. It's got like a lot of footage from their shows, old shows, home footage. You get interviews from a lot of artists. Some artists aren't even on Stone's Throw. They got Tyler Creator in there. They got Kanye West in there, Tyler Kweli. You know, just people who are affiliated with it or who were influenced some way by Stone's Throw. And it's probably a, one of the best documentaries I've seen, period, because it's just so well done. And it was actually made back in 2013, but it wasn't released until this year. And um, I was supposed to go see it. I actually, you know, met Peanut Butter Wolf um, last year. I was supposed to go see the opening um, of it in Atlanta, but I couldn't make it. So I actually got to watch it this year, and I was bummed because I was like, "This is a great movie. I should watch it when it when I had a chance to back then." But better late than never. Our vinyl weighs a ton. Stone's Throws, you know, biopic, and you know, just the, about Stone Throw Records in general. If you've never heard of Stone Throw Records, look them up. They are one of the best indie hip hop. Not even just hip hop. They they do all kinds of music. Indie labels, period, and they're still going strong. So that's my movie list. Top five. I'll go down them one more time. The Drop, Son of God, Dumb and Dumber 2, Nas, Time is Illmatic, and Our Vinyl Ways a Ton. Alright guys, so now the last category is the top five video games 2014. Like I said once again, I have not played every fucking video game that's ever came out, but all the video games that I've played this year... These are the top five that I enjoyed the most and I, you know, just had the best experience playing them and, you know, I'm going to share them with you. So the first game is South Park Stick of Truth or The Stick of Truth. Now, I'm a fan of South Park. I love the show and South Park games usually are bad, but they took a long time making this game and it came out on PS3, Xbox, the last gen consoles. But I was really, you know, and I'm not much of an RPG, and it's more of like an RPG to find a Final Fantasy style, Paper Mario style of, you know, gameplay. But this fucking game is amazing. Not only does it capture every essence of South Park from the references to just how it moves and how it looks, but on top of that, you have, you know, this great gameplay and this great story of that, you know, you are either part of one of these little specific groups and you're trying to recover the stick of truth and you're the new kid in town and, you know, they, you're trying to get recruited and you just meet all these crazy characters and you go on all these crazy missions and adventures, but it's just one of the most fun and in-depth South Park games that they've probably ever made. And it kept getting pushed back, and I see why, because when I played the game, it's just so much in it and so much, so many things about it that you, you know, you got all the references. Every South Park reference, reference that you can find, it's in this game, and they play it well. And just the, the gameplay and the mechanics, the, everything about it, the creativity, you know, all of it, it's just, it's top notch. And this was, you know, one of the best games I had played of this year on any console. And, you know, I, I hope they make another one or something like it. I, I was probably going to take them forever to make it. But, you know, if they do, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. South Park Secret Truth was one of the best. Next game, The Evil Within. This game was a game that when I first played it, I was kind of not too into it. I actually reviewed this game. And like I said in my review, at first when I got into it, it really reminded me so much of Resident Evil 4 and a lot of other games that it kind of put me off. But as I got into the game and got into it more... I fell in love with the game, the gameplay of it, the you know, the everything about it, the story. It was kind of confused, but once you really understand what's going on and just everything about it, this is one of the best probably um, third person, you know, survival horror games that I've played this year. Probably one of the best survival horror games that's come out in a long time. Um, 
and it really takes it back to that Resident Evil 4 nostalgia look and I mean because it's made by the same person but um, the Evil Within was just a great game and I, I still play it to this day. Um, they got expansion packs and stuff like that that made the game even better and you know more fun to you know to interact with and just fucking dope ass survival horror game and I hope they make another one or I hope they make the same people make it uh, another game like it because like that style of play that Resident Evil 4 style gameplay done the way that it's done is the best possible way to have a survival horror game and the evil within you know definitely showcase that next game another survival horror game but in the first person sense and this was the one that was pretty much really hyped and talked about it took a while for me to get to it but when i got to it i was hooked outlast outlast is the probably the scariest fucking game i've ever played in my life I've never screamed or been so stressed out playing a fucking video game as much as I've played Outlast. And the thing about it is, it's got, it's at realism to the T. It's like, there's no weapons, there's no fighting, there's nothing. You, you don't, you have to just survive on instinct and, you know, just being able to, to be in the right place at the right time and not be at the wrong place at the right, wrong time. You know what I mean? And the story of it is you're just a reporter, you go to this mental asylum and it's all these crazy ass people and you just ha you're just trying to get the fuck out. That's all you're trying to do is get the fuck out. And the more you try to get out, the more deeper you go into the place and all you got is a goddamn camera. That's all. And you have to make sure that you keep that camera working because if you don't, you're fucking screwed because that's what pretty much is your eyes and helps you retain all the information that you need to tell the story. And it's just the the scare factor on here is crazy like literally crazy and the cool thing is they added actually put out another installment called whistleblower that even made it even better and it, it furthered the story and like i'm combining both those two it's pretty much outlast outlast and outlast whistleblower it's, it's all combining for me for the same game but all of that wrapped up is some scary ass shit and if Wooly Reviews was out when this game came out, this would have definitely been on the review list because, like, I was in love with this game playing it. And I played it several times over and over again, just, and it's the same effect. You know, you kind of, you know, you still get that same scare factor, even though you know what's going to happen. It, it sometimes, it still gets unpredictable. But, shit, best fucking horror game, survival horror game, whatever you want to call it, I've played in probably the last few years hands down so outlast definitely had to be on the list next game super smash bros for the wii u now this one recently just came out and i'm a huge smash bros fan but the thing about super smash bros is it's a it's a testament to the if it ain't broke don't fix it this game has shelf life until the next smash bros game it gives you everything you need you got your favorite characters the gameplay is great it looks a lot better because now it's on the new gen console with you finally in hd on the wii u um the new character editions that they got are awesome they got pac-man mega man um you know baby B bowser jr uh you know they got you know all the classes i mean it's it's a ton of characters you can you can pick from stages are great you know they got the little interface with the amiibos i actually got one of those amiibo things those things are actually really fucking dope so it's so much that to this game and it's, it's so many levels and so many aspects and even though like i said in my last review it doesn't have a story mode but it's cool because it's got so much more that you can play and this is definitely a game that i'm gonna i'm still playing and will keep playing until they put out another smash bros because nintendo has games that have a lot of shelf life especially like their their real first party games and this is no different so definitely super smash bros for the wii u had to be on the list and my last game of the year that i found was the number one the Walking Dead Season 2. Now, The Walking Dead Season 2 actually debuted in December of 2013. But I'm going to count it as a 2014 release because every other episode that put out was in 2014 and it ended in 2014. So it's a 2014 game in my eyes. Now, if you've never played The Walking Dead game Season 2 or Season 1, basically it kind of similar to the show Zombie Apocalypse and you have to survive. And you now in Season 2... You are playing as Clementine, which was actually in season one, but you weren't playing as her. You were playing as her protector, Lee. But now Lee, spoiler alert, Lee died. Now you're fucking Clementine, and now you're playing as her. And you're going through all these different you know, scenarios and groups and stuff like that, trying to survive. And the game is a real emotion decision-based game. You really get invested with these characters. And it's just one of the most interactive and fun, most fun and dopest games I've played. And I can't wait for season three. It's done by Telltale Games. They're doing a great job. 
And that definitely was on the list. Like, everybody who plays this game, who's come across this game, is instantly addicted. Not only to the game itself, but just the characters involved in the game. And, you know, they did a great job with Season 1. Season 2 was even better. And when Season 3 rolls out, I know they're going to do even better. I don't know how, but I know they will because they've been on a roll ever since. So, that's my top five games. I'm going to go down the list one more time. South Park Stick of Truth. The Evil Within. Outlast and Outlast Whistleblower. That counts as one because it's the same damn game. And Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U. And finally, The Walking Dead Season 2. So there's the top five music, movies, and games of 2014 for me. Like I said, this is my list personally. I have not heard, listened, or seen everything or played everything. But from what I have, this is what did the best for me. But I always want to hear what you guys think. So I'll leave, your, leave your top fives of anything. If it's a movie, game, music, leave it in the comments. I want to see. Everybody's got a different list. Everybody's got a different perspective. But I do hope you guys enjoyed this. A little bit of a variation of the episode. But starting next, this Friday. Sorry, this Friday, we're going back in effect. It's the first Wooly Reviews of the year and reviews are going to be coming out all right so there's no final verdict because i don't have anything to give you a final verdict but all i gotta say is everything i said on this fucking list is granddad approved so granddad approved i guess whatever but hope you enjoyed it see you guys coming on the next episode like i said and check out any of these albums or movies or games if you've never played any of them you may enjoy them and like I said, let me know what you got on your top five, all right? Nothing more to say. Flip it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. And pretty much that's it for 2014. Hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of a different version of Wooly Reviews. really wasn't a review, just more of a, what's well, like an year-end review, but whatever. I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment, let me know what your top five is. I always want to hear the feedback. And also, previous video is on the side as well as that song that I keep telling you to listen to. If you've heard it, thanks. If not, play the shit. It's pretty damn good. And always, follow me on that social shit. Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram. Links in the description. And subscribe. Button on the screen. Button below. Will it reviews twice a week. Starting in the new year. New reviews. Like, it, like I would give you old shit, but it's going to be new reviews. And I'm going to give you more shit. Gaming with the granddad. My gaming sort of show because it's going to be on the same channel. I'm working on that. That's going to be out soon. Got the capture card. Thumbs up on that. And I just need to get a couple more pieces and we'll be good to go. And I'm also doing vinyl vlogs. That's going to be a little bit not as frequent, but it will be happening. And I'm just trying to give you some, you know, variations of shit on the channel, as well as music, because it's good, and music videos and all the other stuff. So if you want that, subscribe, and you'll get all that good shit in 2015. So until next time, I take my leave. Granddaughter, granddad's top five of 2014, I'm out of here.